Welcome back! It's Discoria here with another part two of Dragalia Lost, an introduction for beginners. Okay, so glad to see that you've come to the second part of my video series to go over Dragalia Lost for beginners. Uh, after my first video, I received some excellent feedback from the Reddit community, um, all very constructive, which I appreciated, so I've tried to integrate that into my video today. Uh, I've got stamina, full, full stamina, and also a stamina replenish pack, so I can show you plenty of gameplay. Uh, I've also got wings so that I can do co-op play as well. So, um, the first thing that I'm going to do today, because we kind of left off in the last video where I kind of showed you all of the main screen features along with the buttons, but I didn't really show you where all the buttons go and what all the buttons do, which is kind of the most exciting part because you get to see the actual gameplay and um, what I've chosen, kind of chosen to do with my profile and my collection. So I thought the way that we could set off this video before I start through my daily quests, because there isn't actually an active event right now, um, I would go through and show you all a couple of, uh, you know, items from my collection and my castle and things like that. So let's, uh, let's go to the castle. Um, I'll offer you a helpful tidbit. If you hold the castle button instead of click the castle button, it actually takes you directly to your castle. So we're, I'm going to do that now by holding the castle button and it's going to take me directly to my castle. So in the first video, I talked briefly about something called the castle, also known as the Halidom. Um, that's just what it's called in this game. It physically is an actual castle called the Halidom. Um, if I zoom out here, this whole area is actually customized. And um, it's, it's, a, it's an area where I've constructed all kinds of different buildings, uh, idols, um, different statues, all kinds of things. The, the altars. Uh, I'll go through and kind of introduce a couple buildings so you, you can get a better idea of what the Halidom is for. Essentially, most of these buildings, actually, I think, yeah, pretty much all of these buildings, except for the Halidom and the Smithy <clears throat> and the <clears throat> and the Rupee machines, they they all bestow benefits upon your, your adventurers. So if I zoom in here, for instance, I'll go to a basic, uh, a basic building. So I would consider a basic building a building I didn't obtain from an event, I think. And then I call the special buildings buildings that I kind of obtained from facility events. So I'm going to click on this green altar here. This is a wind altar. Mine is level 21 right now. I have two of these overall. Um, you get these as part of progressing in the actual storyline of the game. And then you can start building them into your castle. And that's completed with the set of options from the main menu. You can, um, I believe these ones came from, yeah, okay, so building. So, yeah, so they were in, under adventurers originally. I don't have any left. I can't build anymore because I've built all that I can build. But as you unlock the story... Uh, you are able to build these these different kinds of altars. And they correspond to the different elements of adventurers in the game. So, of course, there's there's wind, light, dark, fire, and water. Um, and you can get up to two altars in each element. And they increase the stats of their respective elemental adventurers. So, let's go to info here. So, this one's at level... <clears throat> excuse me, guys. This one is at level 21. So it bestows uh, an extra 5.5% HP and health for my wind attuned adventures. Um, it depends on where you are with different, the different levels on your altars. Um, some of my altars are higher than other altar levels because I'm trying to do something specific. I believe my highest altar levels right now are the flame altars because I'm trying to get them to level 30 for a uh, high level gameplay mode on it called um, a high dragon trial which i'll get into at a future date i think i'd like to make a video dedicated to the the high dragon trial i'm getting pretty close to being able to challenge it um so yeah we'll talk about that more in the future uh other buildings include decorations so i'm going to zoom in here so you can see that little snowman like dragon with a hat on it and the windmill these buildings don't do anything special for your adventurers it's really just an, a decoration and I like to have all my decorations out. I'm just that kind of person. I don't decorate for the season. Um, I've got Halloween decorations out, jack-o'-lanterns. I've got Christmas decorations. I've got all kinds of stuff. And I think they're really cute. So I leave them all out in different places. Uh, next kind of facility. Uh, actually, I'll go to the a couple more basic. I, what I would consider basic facilities. These four things that look like mines are mines. They're rupee, rupee mines. So essentially, these mines will actually produce rupees for you. Um, they'll, they'll produce rupees for you as you go through the game, which is fantastic.
Um, and it's it makes a huge difference, actually, as you begin to kind of go towards maxing them out. Um, I'm not sure what the max ruby production is off the top of my head, but all I know is that mine produce a huge amount of rupees, and at this point in the game, I have more rupees than I need. Um, I can't spend my rupees fast enough just at this point um, because I'm saving up for some very specific goals that I don't need a ton of rupees for at this exact moment. Um, but it's, you know, I would highly recommend that you build them up. So especially for beginner players when you're kind of ramping up to try to get enough resources to do what you want to do. Work on those rupee mines, focus on those rupee mines. And again, those are, I believe that those are unlocked through progression through the game. I actually can't, rem I know that they're unlocked through progression from the game, but I don't remember if they're in the storehouse or if they're in the build. Um, so... I don't know if those are in the storehouse or if they're in the build uh, section. So that's something that I'm sure you guys can figure out as the gameplay progresses. Um, other useful buildings uh, that aren't directly boosting, this is called the smithy. So the smithy, as you level this up, which is coincides with your halidom, you can only level this up kind of as you are leveling up your halidom castle. Um, it allows you to upgrade and enhance higher level weapons. So there's tier 3, tier 4, and tier 5 um, weapons. And you can only get to tier 5 when you're at, I believe, level 8 smithy. Um, so, you know, you're going to want to pay attention to leveling that up if you're a beginner player as you go. And keeping it in sync. So this, this building that's under construction right now, the big one, is the Halidom. It's the castle. I'm actually just in the process right now of doing the last available upgrade to a level I think it's going to be level 9 when it's done um cuz it's level 8 right now. Yeah, I think that's yeah. So I'm upgrading it to level level 9, which is the last available maximization level for the castle. Um so I'll make sure that you guys get to see that in a future video, but you can kind of see a little picture of it to the left there of the explanation. So my castle looked different than that. It looked a lot simpler, and this castle I'm upgrading to has a bigger pool and it's got just all the kind of fancy amenities that you come to expect from a castle these days. So, um, yeah, so that's just in the process of being upgraded. So, there are also some special building types, um, as you can see here. So, you can see something that looks like a jack-o'-lantern with, like, cupcake on top and a Christmas tree, and then there's a large, very large, uh, winged green structure. These are um, facilities that they gave us when they ran events called facility events. And these events come in between the raids right now and essentially provide us with a building that bestows even more benefits and bonuses on certain attuned adventurers. So the Sweet Retreat actually bestowed HP and Strength bonuses on light attuned adventurers. The Christmas Tree uh, bestowed it on water type adventurers. This one's Wind, obviously. Um, I believe that those are the one, the only ones we've gotten right now, if my memory serves, because I have everything out. So um, we're getting a, the newest event that's going to be coming out next week is another facility event with a facility for light tuned adventurers again, um, and it's a circus themed event. So I'm I'm super pumped for that event. I I think circus the circuses. What's the plural of circuses? I'm going to assume it's circuses because I don't think it's circi. I've never heard anyone say circi. I really like circuses or cir the circus. Uh, I think it's going to be cool, creative, colorful. I'm really looking forward to the adventurers that they're going to release on the banner for that. And I'm definitely going to find a front and center um, spot in my Halidom to put that new uh, that new facility building, which is supposed to look like a circus tent, according to uh, <laughs> the hints that they've given us. The only other thing that I'm going to mention here, I just want to go back to basic buildings for a second, because if I don't mention it, no doubt somebody's going to call me out on it, because it's important. Another type of basic building other than the altar are these dojos. Uh, I'm clicking them. There's a there's many different kinds. There's there's I believe a dojo for each weapon type, um, and there are a number of weapon types, including uh, katana, sword, uh, spear, blade, uh, dagger, excuse me, staff, wand, uh, and axe. And I think that's all of them um, off the top of my head. I can't remember at the exact moment. Um, and there's a dojo for each, and again, you can get up to two do dojos for each weapon to start maximizing. Um, I'm working on my katana 
dojos right now. One of them is at level 16, and you can see it looks cooler than the other ones. It's got a second level, um, and I'm working on the other one also becoming level 16 because that's a necessary requirement for um, the High Mega Summer High Dragon Trial. So that's that's kind of where I'm focusing my resources on right now. They become more and more difficult to upgrade as you go. If you w look at the level up button, um, I have plenty of two of the resources needed for this, but I need um, what's called the insignias, which are the blue um, metal looking things on the right hand side. So um, I've just got so many different resources I'm grinding for right now that I'm not quite there yet with the dojos. But all in all, this is this is my halidum. I quite like my halidum. Um, it's, it, you know, I pretty much got it to the point where it's doing what I need it to do. Uh, and I think it looks pretty cool. So uh, other than that, I think I'm going to show you my collection as we go. Um, I don't want to just go to the collection screen and go over everything. I think that's kind of bored and kind of braggy. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'll just show you the adventures that I like, the ones I actually use as I go. Because there's there's three star, four star, and five star rarity adventures. And I I like a, I like them all. There's four star adventures that I absolutely love. Uh, there's five star adventures I love. And there's three star adventures I adore. Um and the cool thing about this game is you can play with all of them. I've played with all of them. I've upgraded all different levels and rarities of, uh, of adventurers, and they're all very cool. So I would, honestly, as a new player, I would do... Uh, oh, yeah, they, you know what? I was going to say make sure you start off with at least one five-star, whether it be re-rolling or not. But you don't have to re-roll anymore because literally this game and its creators are so cool that they've said in the latest update that a uh, new star new players starting at a certain date i don't know exactly what that date is right now but new players starting from a certain date onwards actually will be guaranteed a five-star adventure because they're going to be providing tickets so good on you if you're starting dragalia lost after they institute that change because you are guaranteed a five-star from a five-star ticket which is awesome um you really do want to try and start the game with at least one five-star adventure and a five-star dragon I, I would recommend that because the dragons are pretty difficult to like any five star is very difficult to pull as in any gotcha game um rng is is what it is like it exists it's a thing so what you start with at the beginning just you know know that that could be the only five star units that you have for a while so be happy with kind of what you're starting with and there's lots of guides out there to kind of give you an idea of which units are higher tier and other tier, if that's how you roll. I personally don't roll that way. Um, I started, I didn't know anything about gotchas when I started playing this game. I've learned everything since um, with my thorough education on Reddit. Uh, but I was lucky enough to start the game with um, Isolith, which is a five-star fire adventurer, and I pulled two four-star gotcha dragons in my first pull, and Verica, which is a very high-end healer, a four-star fire healer, as well as uh, Juggernaut and Poliahu. And so I kind of stuck with that pull, and I've been lucky enough to pull a number of really good units since then. I'm I'm definitely, like, um, I've put money into this game. I would say at this point I'm probably, probably about $150 into this game. No regrets. It's been worth every penny. I've enjoyed all my time in this game, played every day. Did very much worth it. Um, but that $150 has helped to support the developers and it has gotten me a lot of good stuff. Like I'm, I've pulled a lot of good stuff with that $150, but if you're going to do free to play, also good, also cool. I'm sh like with the new guarantees for the five star uh, character to start with, you're going to be just fine. Um, so don't worry about the rarity of your adventures. That would be my advice to you. Just enjoy the game and uh, clear the content that you can with what you have, which is pretty much everything. I think the only content that's a little bit gated by, um, I wouldn't even say it's, it is a little bit, it's a little bit gated would be the high, high dragon trials right now, but even that, like, there's been so many examples of, um, people running those trials online with, uh, the free units that they give in the stories, uh, like Yudin for High Migrate Summer, or, um, it's different for Brunhilde's High Trial, I think, I've been, I don't know as much about that one right now, because I'm still so focused on clearing the, the first one, but, yeah, I won't. I won't talk about that one too much. I think that one's. Uh, you need some higher end stuff to, to play that trial right now. Anyways, I digress. So what else I'd like to do is bring you uh, through the rest of my daily kind of routine when I sign in. I always come to my Haladum first. I get all my coins by pressing pressing the collect all button on the left hand side, um, and I get. It also gets my. <laughs> I missed this. Good thing I went back to this. See this little tree? That is the dragon fruit tree. 
those dragon fruit that I pull from there by the, using the collect all button, which I already pulled this morning, um, earlier in the video, those dragon fruit are what I feed to my dragons to increase my, nope, not to increase my bond with my dragon, to increase the level of your dragon. And dragons have different maximum levels based on their rarity, uh, and different strength and HP maximums. Obviously with the gotcha four star dragons and the, um, gotcha five star dragons being the absolute strongest and then the free five star dragons that they give you during raids so far every raid we've received a free five star dragon some of them are still pretty good uh some of them are not so good um but they're still really cool to look at and i'm a collector before i am anything else so of course i have to have all of them um anyway so that dragon fruit the, the next thing i do as part of my morning routine after i've collected my rupees and after i've collected my dragon fruit is i generally hit the summon button um, under the right hand side that I showed you in my first video and I do my daily summon. So I'm going to hit the summon button now and we'll see. All right. So the banner that's going on right now is called the Gala Dragalia banner. Um, I haven't pulled on it and I'm not going to pull on it. It's the character that you can pull is called Cerise, uh, a five star gala version of Cerise. And it's awesome. Like, I've looked at this character, I've read reviews for it, I've, I've uh, read people's write-up for it online, um, on Reddit, and everybody's saying, it's like, she's a really good character with a crazy strong kit. Um, she also has two resistances. I, I don't know, I don't remember which ones they are. I think it might be paralysis and stun, which means she can basically resist an enemy paralyzing or stunning her, and this is the first character we've seen in the game that has 200% stun resists, so that's kind of crazy but even so I'm not going to pull on this banner because um I'm waiting for the circus banner and the valentine's day banner those are banners that I think I'm just going to be more interested in and the write-up for this banner that they gave in the uh comments or details or news section I think it's called the news section said that this this uh gala dragalia banner is going to come back every two months and cerise will be in it again so this is, to me, this is not a limited unit. I don't need to focus my resources on pulling it. Plus, it's, like, I like Cerise, don't get me wrong, but I, I sometimes fall in love with with the design of the characters, and this one, like, I like it, but I'm not in love with it. I'm in love with the kit, though. So it, that almost made me pull it for it alone, is just the, the amazing kit that this character has, but it's not enough, so I'm not pulling on it. I'm gonna wait. I'm I'm strong. I'm waiting for... I'm waiting for the Valentine's Day banner and the circus banner that's coming up with light adventures. Um, also, because my light team, I have a five-star light healer, but I don't have a five-star light attacker or support unit. Um, just basically, I don't have a five-star light type adventurer that is good for attacking. Um, that's not true. I'm going to show you guys my collection, and somebody, no doubt, in the comments is going to be like, you have a maxed out... Amane almost, she's just fine. She is just fine. Amane is amazing. I use Amane. She's really, really good. All I'm saying is I don't have a five-star light attacker. That's the statement of fact, and I'd like one. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to use my resources and diamantium, uh, probably not my diamantium, but all my resources to pull on, um, on the light banner that's coming up. But I already mentioned that I'm going to be doing a pull this morning, so all the beginners are likely sitting there saying, well, you already said you were going to pull Discoria, and you know what? You're right, I did say that. So, the money that I spend on this game, I buy I buy packs, basically, is what they're called. And these packs uh, come with the premium uh, currency called Diamantium that I introduced in the first video. And this premium currency allows me to do one daily pull a day for only 30 Diamantium, which is, to me, an absolutely outstanding deal. Because I can, for very little Diamantium, every day... I get the excitement of possibly pulling something awesome. Generally, I pull three stars and worm prints, but I'm not going to lie. I have pulled some pretty amazing things from the, the daily deal, including I pulled Iyatsu from the last banner, which was the limited New Year's uh, character. He came from a daily deal pull. I have pulled Mikoto, which is a five-star fire katana. I pulled that much earlier in the game. That came from a daily deal. Um... One more of my five stars came from a daily deal as well. Uh, Louise from uh, the wind type bow character, I also pulled from a daily deal. So RNG has been really good to me on these daily deals. So, you know, I've pulled a lot of worm prints and I've pulled a lot of uh, three star and four star characters, which is fine. They are all very good. Um, but I, I uh, 
let's here's hoping i'd really love to see a gala sagalia cerise out of this that would be really exciting <laughs> so here we go we're clicking the daily deal we're gonna do it you guys are the daily deal if i can pronounce today you guys are with me for it let's see what we get here we go do 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 probably should have had the music on for this part the music's actually really good Okay, nope. Okay, so I know from the blue that it's no nothing rare. It's just a common. Probably going to be a worm print. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of worm prints. A lot of fully unbound worm prints. I don't know if I have this one fully unbound, but I will soon. Anyways, that's just the way it goes. Sometimes daily deal is awesome. Sometimes daily deal is worm print. That's just the way it goes. But there'll be more exciting pulls um, in my video next week for the for the circus banner. So you guys will get to see more pulls for sure. Um, I have lots of uh, vouchers saved up for pulls next week. And these vouchers, they let you to make pulls without spending the Warmite currency. Um, I have 15 single tickets and two tenfold tickets from the New Year's events that I've managed to save. So I'm going to have lots of free pulls before I even get to my Warmite um, for the uh, banner next week. So definitely tune into that video because that will be really exciting. So that's that's kind of how I start to start my morning. Um, I think what I'll do before I tune out of this video is I'll go back and I'll do one adventure run so you guys can kind of just at least see one how one works in the morning because I run I run a bunch in the morning just to get them out of the way um, because you get daily wormite and completion endeavors for completing them so I'm gonna run the these these events these three events Avenue to Power Avenue to Fortune Elemental Ruins they're there every day you can run them every day uh, Avenue to Power and Avenue to Fortune never change. Elemental Ruins rotate. So different kinds of uh, elements are available to grind for resources that you need. Um, different days. I think Elemental Ruins allows me to... Okay, so sometimes... Uh, I know there's days of the week where you can run all the different colors. Today, it's you can run either the light or the dark ruins, which gives you light-type resources or dark-type resources. But I'm going to run Avenue to Power. That's gets This one gets gives you golden crystals, which are used to upgrade the level of your adventurers. So I'm going to do Master Difficulty, as I always do, because it gives the most resources. Um, master Difficulty required 7,500 might. Uh, it just means it gives you a benchmark as to how strong your adventures should be before you challenge this. If your might's... Might isn't really a great measure of strength. Um, it's not directly related to strength, but it's, it's a good benchmark, I guess. Um, your team should at least be over the 7,500 7, mark, unless you're kind of an exceptional controller of characters. Um, the time clock may, is an issue more than you being an exceptional player, because you have to do enough damage to kind of kill everything before the time clock runs out. Um, stamina, 15, so it costs 15 stamina to run, to run this, um, which is one of the reasons I bought a stamina refill pack. Uh, it lets me actually refill my wings and stamina by 100 and... Sorry, by um, 12 and 100 respectively each day, which I like because then I can run my dailies more than once and get extra resources. It just makes everything go a little bit faster, which I'm I'm fine to pay some money to do. So, Avenue to Master. This screen lets you actually pick a, a friend. Um, and by picking a friend, you can give them 50 mana by using their, their character to kind of help you complete a mission. I generally don't need friend help I don't need an ability help to do this but I'm gonna I always pick somebody anyways just because I like having different abilities and what's on my team I don't have this character uh eight it's Halloween Ellie um so I, I like picking her because then I get to see her special ability um she was a five-star Halloween limited unit that I didn't I didn't pull unfortunately but maybe in the future anyway so I'm gonna click that and I get that ability to help my team with um, that's my wind team. I'm actually going to use, this is a dark type event. You can see how it says on the top, Avenue to Power Master, and it's got the purple next to it. Um, this is a dark type, so I'm going to use a light type team so I have the advantage. This is my light type team. Uh, characters Malka, Hildegard, uh, Elias, and Amane. Um, got some cool dragons on here. I'm, I'm not going to get into the detail of the composition of the team because this is for beginners right now and I don't want to go like right down the rabbit hole on my composition. Um, suffice to say that Malka's a three star, Hildegard's a five star healer, Elias is a bow type, uh, and Amane is another light type. I would call her my attack unit. Um, and I, I love them all, but Malka's my favorite. I've upgraded him to a four star even though he started out as a three star. Uh, 
these if this is all unfamiliar to you what i'm saying don't worry we will go over it in the future you can upgrade three star units to four star units by spending a resource called eldwater um i'll i'll give a little bit of a tutorial on that in the future anyways let's take this team and let's actually just play a mission Okay, go Malka. So Malka uses a, um, oh wow, my brain's just completely blanking out. A spear, a lance, I guess you could call it. Uh, I have a five tier level one lance for him, um, which like suffices right now. As soon as you get higher, with, with the fifth tier of weapons, as soon as you go fifth, um, fifth tier level one, fifth tier level two, fifth tier level three so if you're in tier two or tier three of level five you're starting to get into some serious uh, rupee investment resource investment it's actually really not even the rupee investment it's the resource investment grinding for the other resources you need to craft those weapons i generally don't go higher than uh, fifth tier level one unless like i'm going to be using that character all, either either i'm in love with that character or i need that weapon to be stronger for um I need that character to be stronger for a high dragon trial because I'm working on the fifth tier level three weapon for my Mikoto right now, so I can clear the um, so I can clear High Midgard Summer's trial and finally unlock that dragon, which I'd really like. Uh, so for the battle, what I'm doing right now, um, you can see my ability buttons at the bottom of the screen are charging. As you hit enemies, your abilities charge. That's it's a pretty simple premise. Uh, different characters have different abilities. This one. If I hit the blue ability button like I just did, that lets my spear go in a circle and I do significantly more damage. Now in this final wave, I'm actually going to use my dragon. I'm going to turn into a dragon. So hit my dragon button, which is my cupid on the left-hand side. This was uh, a five-star light dragon that I was lucky enough to pull during that banner. I love this dragon. This is probably one of my favorite dragons. You turn into a dragon, you become a lot stronger. Your, your ability to do damage goes way up. Um... It's just awesome. It's fun. It's cool. There are very specific stats involved. There are very specific stats involved, uh, but, you know, I don't know all the spe st specific stats off the top of my head. Cupid is a light-attuned bonus dragon, so he get, he bestows plus 40% strength um, to a light-attuned user, which is why I pair him with Malka, because Malka being a natural three-star, now promoted to a four-star, he doesn't have as much natural strength as, let's say, a gotcha four-star or a gotcha five-star, but I love to use him, so I pair him with Cupid, boosts his, his strength, and he's more usable in competitive situations. So this is the post-battle screen. Um, you can see the three uh, objectives you need to complete on the top left-hand side. I did that a long time ago. The first time you ever do it, you actually get a Warmite bonus. Um, player experience, I'm a level 95 overall player, so for me to go from level to level at this point takes a week, usually a couple days in between, maybe less than that, but um, I'd like to get to the max level eventually. Adventure HP, uh, or sorry, Adventure Experience, so that's the experience that goes to each adventure. Malka and Amane are actually max level right now. Um, if I promoted them to level 5, they could be level 80. Uh, like Hildegard's at level 79 because Hildegard's a natural 5 star, so it can be, go all the way up to level 80. And Elias is a 4 star, it was a free unit actually given during a raid, um, and he can go up to level 70 as well. So this team's still got some room to level up. Spoils are what you get from the battle. So this battle gave me 497 mana. That's a very small amount of mana. Um, you don't run these to get the mana. <laughs> or the rupees. That's a very tiny amount of rupees. I run this for the drop rewards, which are the golden crystals. So you want to amass these golden crystals because you can use them to upgrade the level of your adventure if you need a... Generally speaking, I'll just try and get... I'll use these crystals to get my adventurers to level 50, and then I'll level them up naturally from there, unless I absolutely need something to be max level for some reason, which I have not really run into yet. I think I ran into that once or twice for a challenge battle during a facility event, where I just needed that extra push. But um, yeah, that's what the gold uh, crystals are for. So let's go back to the main screen here. Okay, so... I'm going to go back to the home screen. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Uh, someone did mention in the last video that the length of these videos is a little intimidating for new players. So I, ha I want to be careful about that. I didn't, this video is even longer than the last video. So I guess I didn't, uh, 
really listen to that too much. Hopefully the hopefully the quality of this video, um, you know, it, it helped. It wasn't too intimidating or overwhelming. Um, if you have any questions about anything I covered here, please let me know. Um, I'll be happy to answer it in the questions uh, comments section. Other than that, uh, I will be back next week with coverage for the new event that's coming up called Dream Big Under the Dream, sorry, Dream Big Under the Big Top. Looking forward to some exciting polls and some exciting coverage. Tune in next week. Thanks, guys.